good morning, good morning. I'm so exhausted. Didn't sleep so amazing. But we are on the way to Motul flagship store. I've been driving the 69 Mach 1 for quite a while already and we have a thousand six hundred seventy-five kilometers put on the odometer already. So I've had quite a few small issues with the 69 Mach 1. I have a slight rev hang when I'm getting off the throttle. The rev stays at around 2000 RPM and then you heard we have a little hard start in the morning also so we want to sort that out and then just fixing the overall power band now the nice thing with doing a dyno tune which is what we're going to do right now if you guys haven't seen the m4 vlog where we dyno tuned it at the moto flagship store the dyno tune is like a treadmill for the cars it allows us to run the car from every rev range tuning for what they call tip in throttle is when you first press the accelerator all the way to partial throttle which is like maybe 30 40 percent of your actual throttle and then wide open tuning so wide open tuning is when you're tuning the car when you have 100 percent throttle which means everything is maxed out and that's where you usually get the max power for the car or at least the max reading on the dyno for your car now a few caveats when you're doing dyno tuning is that when you're running the car on the dyno you're sort of uh, have the hood open so it's not really simulating actual load of the car so normally when your hood's closed and it's in traffic you don't have all this airflow coming through the car and which means you're gonna have heat soak heat is the enemy of horsepower and the more heat you have underneath your engine bay the more it's going to rob you of precious horsepower because when hot air enters the intake of your engine you're going to have what they call less combustibility so cold air is actually better for more power because it's more dense and then hot air is not as dense so the hotter the air in the system or in the engine bay the worse horsepower you're going to get so sometimes tuners will put safety protocols when the temperature or what they call the iat intake air temperature exceeds a certain value it pulls timing from the motor now when you pull timing from the motor you're basically reducing how much spark advance is being given so normally when uh, you're just looking at it from ones and zeros perspective when your top dead center are zero then you have spark there but you're not going to make power because that means you're at the top of the stroke so when you're top of the stroke you don't have the rebound effect so what happens is they do uh, spark advance so what happens is before the piston hits the top of the stroke or the end of where the conrad and the crankshaft meet you basically want to spark before that so that there's an actual compression of the gas so as the fuel comes in and then the air comes in the spark ignites that right so if you're igniting it at the topmost center you basically don't have time to compress the gas the gas is compressed already so what happens is when they say they advance the timing is you basically spark it at a lower portion of the piston head so as it's coming to the top of the compression that's when most power is met because you're compressing the gas which makes it more explosive so when the gas actually combusts it pushes the piston back down and then that's what sends the power and torque down into your transmission system i hope you got all that that's so geeky but that's what we're going to do today we're going to tune these two cars we're going to try to see also if we can get some parts for the link ecu that we're using in skyfero tomorrow if you guys are back on the channel we are doing some major updates on the fdrx7 and it's finally running and larry chen i know loves jdm cars so i'm trying to get all my jdm cars running for his visit at the end of april so stay tuned for that you guys need to come out to the meets say hi to larry say hi to me and we're gonna have a fun fun time it's gonna be super like condensed but it's going to be very exciting the car has this weird kick as well it just does this small uh, uh. so i don't know what's up with that and we're gonna form chino our tuner about all these things and hopefully he can sort of code it out i actually want to find out what's the actual rev limiter of this engine i think it's 8000 or 75 this is a coyote motor which means it's a more modern engine and it supposedly has a higher rev range a little underpass where we can hear the full regala of this v8 <laughs> it's traffic, we can't really do anything. The Skyway is such a blessing for all motorists. It's not the fastest, but for an old car, it's amazing. 7,000 red line. 
There's a slight rev hang, or it drops down. It's gonna rev hang from uh, third gear stop. There it is. Rev hang in, and then it drops down and then it drops down. So I wonder if that's overfueling. Here we are back at the Motel flagship store and RWB Noah's here. Wow, they're quick. Two cars for dyno. This is also hard starting. Let's bring it down. So this is hard starting also. Let's see. Yep, little hard start. I'm actually curious to know what power Noah makes because we're running a 3.8 liter motor already in this car. This was rebuilt twice. Trina is here already. Morning. These two cars have completely different motors, but this one is running an AEM and the Mustang is also running an AEM. The AEM is the ECU that is controlling the engine for both of these cars and that's the engine management system. And uh, we're slowly migrating away from AEM already, but for now, Chino's gonna basically strap them both to the dyno. Morning! What's up? How are you? I'm good. We're back. Temperature's nice and warm now. Yeah, so you can rev it. <laughs> because normally with Porsches you tie it on the arms but being that it's so wide we don't know where to tie it. Look at this Suzuki Jimny. It's got a GT3 style center exhaust. That's so funny. It's kind of cute. The debate. The great debate. Okay, finally strapped in the dyno and Chino is setting up. I've got my earplugs on. Now it won't start. What's happening? <laughs> so we're eventually going to close the back door so that we can get all the fans to work but the problem is obviously the engine's in the rear so the front fan is only cooled down the oil cooler and Chino is sorting out why it won't start. Okay, we're having issues with the crank sensor. It's not reading the position of the crank so we're not getting any timing or RPM reading which is a big issue. Begins the troubleshooting for today's vlog. Okay, for the longest time we couldn't get the car to start. We weren't getting any signal from the crank position sensor but now Chino got it running because we found out that the wiring has issues. The cursor is where we are in the RPM range. We're 
back to the same issue. The car won't start again. We're now looking at all the wiring and I have a feeling we're not gonna be able to finish RWB Noah today. Chino now troubleshooting, trying to figure out what is wrong with the wiring. It happens when the engine is hot, but every time it's cold, the car starts up. So I'm quite curious to know also what's happening here. Okay guys, so I have made an executive decision we're gonna remove the car off the dyno. It doesn't make sense that we have this issue and it's only gonna affect the tuning. If you look at the power levels here, we had a massive jump in torque and that does not make sense. So this shouldn't be that far apart. And if we're losing crank signal, it basically affects everything. Uh, crank signal is in charge of timing. And everything. Uh, and fueling. Fueling. Yeah. And everything. 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 Everything, everything. everything revolves around the crank. So, Okay, abort. Change car. <laughs> hey, will you start? No. Okay, we're gonna push. Wala. You gotta make it uga talaga. Yeah! Hi, yeah. Okay, car is gonna go back to Alfredo. Just push it on because we could not get it running. Thank you again to Camel Toe. It's so hot. Look at that. Nice GR Yaris on race. Wow. Second car. Sana more successful. Oh, okay, you're rolling back. Chino, you're rolling back. Malas ni Mark. Atras wait lang. Yeah, the foot brake's not so strong. Kawa si Mark kung masira pa to. And sabi natin kasalanan ni Mark. <laughs> Just brake na lang when you start. Okay, we're moving. Told Chino to bring it inside already. It's so hot. Okay, it is the afternoon already and we're still here in the diner room. I have put my earplugs on already and Chino is getting back into the 69 Mach 1. This car was built and restored by Classic Speed and it's running a Coyote 5.0 motor. Now the motor, as I was telling you guys, it has ITB systems. This is the ITB system. And as you can see, it's an 8 stack ITB system. It's got individual throttle bodies. Each throttle body has its own plenum. Each plenum has its own linkage and they're all interconnected together. So if one linkage is longer, it basically gets everything stuck. So right now, Chino's gonna do a quick read on all the basics, and then hopefully we can get to a dyno back. Roughly, I'm estimating this should be in the 400 range, because last time we had a dyno tuned with the previous tuner, and he was saying it's only 340, so I don't get where the difference is in power, but uh, we'll see what Chino can come up with. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, that we finish this car today. RWB NOAA has to go under severe checkup for the crank position sensor. It might be the sensor, the wiring from the crank sensor to the fuse box, and then the fuse box wiring to the ECU. So three things to check for RWB NOAA. It went back to Garage 2233. So the team of Alfredo can help diagnose and see what's up with Noah. It's so funny, in the other vlog that we were using the car, we had zero issues. Now that we want to perfect the car, we have so many issues. I don't know what's happening, but thank God we didn't break down on the road. That will be such a hassle. We did a first pass only at 307 horsepower, but have not touched anything. So hypothetically, this engine should be pushing like 400 plus. Chino's doing part throttle tuning again, which is basically stepping on the throttle from 1.5 to 2,000 to 3,000. So it's basically when you're idling, it's at uh, roughly 10 percent, 7 to 10 percent. The blade has to open for idle. So what Chino's doing now is making sure in traffic has a good response it doesn't doesn't jerk the car because we're having improper mixture so that's a lot of the trick to doing the baseline tune and the street ability tune just to make sure you do a lot of partial throttle tuning check 
checking all the logs and parameters because I showed you the graph a while ago wherever that gray area is that's where I guess the set point is that needs to be changed Tina's done so I can now explain to you guys what is happening so this is the throttle body blade and what happens is when we step on the throttle 100% we're not getting a hundred percent on the blade we're only getting about 65% which means the stroke of the throttle pedal because the throttle pedal pulls the cable it basically doesn't match so even if the throttle pedal is on the floor the cable and the pulley on the engine side is not opening 100% so I got to figure that out with a team, which means probably we're going to adjust the throttle pedal and then bring it up a little so that we have more stroke when we push the throttle. If we're not, the second option is to decrease the pulley size. And by decreasing the pulley size, we basically need to use more force when we're stepping on the throttle, but it also gives us sharper throttle response. So I was quite alarmed because the horsepower reading was very low and that was the sign for me to investigate further. And when I asked Chino to check the TPS sensor or the throttle position sensor, we were figuring out that even on the reading, it was not giving us full reading. So we visually inspected it and that was it. So we're gonna go back to the drawing board, but that concludes today's lessons on dyno tuning. I hope you guys learned something new from today. I'm back on the road and the only way to test if the dyno tune is doing well is to drive it on the street. So we'll see if uh, a lot of the issues that we had, Chino is able to tune out. And uh, we gotta go back to classic speed and sort out the gas pedal so that we can get maximum throttle because I had a feeling that we were underpowered with this car and my theory was correct. So now we gotta go back to the drawing board and sort that out. disadvantage to our situation because it means we're not maximizing the efficiency of everything so we've got to fix that definitely to get more power out of the car i'm glad we figured that out today i still have the slide rev hang but i think 